Freedom of expression has increasingly come under attack, is how I had concluded my remarks two years ago at this very place, during the fourth gathering of freedom of expression. But uh, sadly, this observation remains true today. Uh, my topic is freedom of expression in the world since the last uh, freedom of expression gathering. And talking about this in 10 minutes is quite challenging. So what I will do is I will split my intervention into two parts. First, at national level, I will choose to highlight those countries that have been highlighted by the IPA Freedom Prize, a prize which was created in 2005. So I will briefly talk about Zimbabwe, Iran, Turkey, and uh, Russia. And then I will briefly uh, have an overview of the institutional and legal developments at international level. Uh, in Iran, the publication and distribution of books requires a permit from the Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance. Such permits are granted after scrutiny by officials who might also demand the removal of materials deemed anti-Islamic, immoral, or politically unacceptable. This permission system amounts to censorship, which is of course contrary to Iran's international obligation under international law. And in late 2005, the same Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance introduced the so-called procedural guidelines for publication, which made the whole, uh, s the whole system even worse. Uh, levels of censorship have reached a new height. Iranian authors whose views are not in line with those of the authorities face de facto ban and are forced to publish abroad or in the internet. Uh, Self-censorship is growing. The very existence of an independent publishing industry is at stake, with publishing houses having gone bankrupt already or about to go bankrupt. So we have urged Iran to lift these guidelines uh, that run counter the right to freedom of expression. And on the occasion of the 20th International Tehran Book Fair earlier this month, the authorities wanted to segregate the domestic publishers and the international publishers by the two groups would have exhibited in two different locations, miles apart. And we said that this was not acceptable as the book trade is based on free, the free exchange of ideas and contacts. Um, we strongly protested and we spearheaded an international campaign to put an end to these plans and this worked. This worked because in the end, the uh, book fair ended up being united. Uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, the publication of inaccurate information is criminalized. Legal provisions have been used to prosecute journalists and writers who are routinely uh, subjected to verbal intimidation, physical attacks, arrests, and financial pressure by the, by the authorities. And at the Cape Town Book Fair on the 15th of June, 2007, uh, Trevon Kube, the publisher uh, from Zimbabwe, will be receiving the 2007 IPA Freedom Prize uh, in recognition of his exemplary defense of freedom to publish in his country and internationally. Despite repeated threats of violence and attempts to strip him of his Zimbabwean citizenship, Nkube's newspapers have continued to expose corruption and human rights abuses in, Jim in Zimbabwe. And we hope that by awarding him this prize, we will highlight, help highlight the situation of freedom of expression in his country. In Russia, freedom of expression has been declining since President Putin took power seven years ago. Uh, ongoing impunity for the murder of journalists, proposed legal restrictions on the press, persecution of journalists, writers, and publishers reporting on Chechnya uh, have, uh, have been negative trends in the country. Some of the taboo subjects include Chechnya, terrorism, narcotics, corruption, Putin's administration and scrutiny of the government. In 2003, to give just one example, Tales of the Kremlin Digger, uh, a book by Yelena Trebugova on Putin's administration, a very highly critical book, um, was a bestseller. Uh, and a bomb, a parcel bomb, exploded at her home uh, a few months later, and thankfully no one was injured. On 7 of October, um, Another outspoken critic of Vladimir Putin was shot dead in front of an apartment building in Moscow. Anna Politkovskaya was 48 years old. By awarding her the 2007 IPA Freedom Prize Special Award, we remind the Russian authorities that full light must be shed on all the aspects of this monstrous case. 
Now to Turkey, very briefly. Sarah will be talking about, Sarah Wayat of International Ben will be talking about insult laws in Turkey and in the European Union member states where there are plenty of insult laws. As far as Turkey is concerned, what I can say is that Article 301 of the Turkish Penal Code is used to stifle that debate. The concept of Turkishness is uh, included in this article is way too vague. It can be easily ill-interpreted. It lacks legal certainty for the citizens. One can say that there is no such thing as Britishness or Frenchness in the British or French legislations. In the Turkish context, the trials of writers, journalists, and publishers under 301 are many, and from a pragmatic point of view, and I would like to underline this, this adjective, from a pragmatic point of view, Article 301, which already includes a provision stating that criticism is allowed, this is the paragraph 4 of the article, should be repealed entirely as a consequence, or at the very least should be rid of the concept, the vague concept of Turkishness. IPA initiated an international petition in that sense, which was released in February 2007, and it was signed by 41 domestic and international NGOs. I have a copy here of the text if you would like to have a look at it. And this petition also called for the repeal of other insult laws, uh, including Law 5816, protecting the memory of Ataturk from insult. And Eugene, you mentioned Rant, and at, in Cape Town next month, IPA will also be awarding him the 2007 IPA Freedom Prize Special Award. He had been convicted under Article 301 in October 2006 to a six-month suspended prison sentence. In giving him the special award, we will rise to celebrate his courage, his humanity, and his witness. Now, very briefly, at international level, we had the UNESCO Convention on Cultural Diversity. It was adopted in October 2005 at the UNESCO General Assembly at an overwhelming majority. IPA, right from the beginning, made it clear that freedom to publish and the promotion of cultural diversity were complementary only if freedom of expression was properly taken into account. We did not want the protection of cultural diversity to be used as a pretext to bar access or to favor specific political views or cultural expressions. We therefore demanded the strengthening of the convention principles that dealt with human rights and freedom of expression, and we were in part listened to. The World Summit on the Information Society concluded in November 2005 in Tunis, and we acknowledged with relief the reaffirmation of human rights principles and the rights to freedom of expression that was contained in the Tunis commitment of the World Summit on the Information Society. It was not easy to have Article 19 included in the final World Summit document. A draft circulated as late as October 2005 made a reference to paragraph 3 of Article 19 only. Namely, and I quote, the special duties and responsibilities that the right to freedom of expression carries with it, which may therefore be subject to certain restrictions provided by law. And the fact that Tunisia was the host country of the second phase of the World Summit was also a problem in itself. IPA and its fellow members of the Tunisia Monitoring Group had widely, as widely documented the poor conditions for freedom of expression in Tunisia through a series of reports uh, since 2005. For instance, and to give just one example, there is no freedom to publish in Tunisia. There is a system the legal depot system, the legal submission procedure is used as a tool of censorship where a book, post-printing, can be censored and blocked at the desk, at the desk at the Ministry of the Interior, waiting for a highly improbable authorization for months and years sometimes. Briefly, now, and before concluding, I will talk about the caricatures crisis. We had to address this crisis. We felt we had to address this crisis uh, as, a, as a trade association with a human rights mandate. And we are represented worldwide. We have a member we have members in all countries of the world, and following extensive consultation, we adopted a resolution in April 2006, stressing the importance of freedom of expression in this affair, uh, saying that the respect for other cultures, uh, that the debate should not have put freedom of expression and the respect for other cultures on opposing sides, and that greater awareness of the cultures of others should develop in addition to freedom of expression.
but as a restriction to freedom of expression. Now to conclude, I will talk about the United Nations Human Rights Council, which succeeded the United Nations Commission on Human Rights last year. And this council this far, we believe, has failed to improve the record of the United Nations Commission, and it was the initial goal. For instance, we strongly uh, protested uh, a United Nations Human Rights Council uh, resolution adopted on the 30th of March 2007. This resolution on the need to combat defamation of religions uh, violates international standards of freedom of expression. In its Article 10, the resolution says that, and I quote, freedom of expression should be exercised with responsibility and may be limited with regard to respect for religions and beliefs. Freedom of expression and freedom to publish are prerequisites for an informed exchange of views, information, and values among citizens. They constitute a right to inform, discuss, criticize, even satires and mock. Religious believers have a right not to be discriminated against on the basis of their beliefs, and in that sense, freedom of religion is fundamental. But they cannot expect their religion to be set free from criticism. Reciprocally, freedom of expression implies a right to contest and protest against any utterance that you dislike or feel insulted by. This far, the UN Commission has, proved, has failed to improve the record of the UN Commission on Human Rights by adopting resolutions such as this resolution. And to conclude, we will continue our work as the watchdog for freedom to publish worldwide. And I say freedom to publish because we are the only organization dealing with this subset of freedom of expression. For we have to remain vigilant, we have to remain firm, we have to remain as efficient as possible because there are a lot of perils threatening freedom of expression worldwide. Thank you very much.